obviously Hutch's injury news is devastating for everybody who loves football, loves good ball. Do you see them making a move? And who are some people potentially on the block at that position? I see them looking to make a move, but I don't see them mortgaging the future. I don't see them giving up multiple ones for Max Crosby or Miles Garrett or even Hassan Reddick. Like, there are some names that are out there that will just keep coming up, but I don't think the Browns, no matter what spot they're in, no matter how much they could be rebuilding, are in a position where they're going to be moving on from Miles Garrett. I think the same is true of Max Crosby. You've heard Max talk about his commitment to Las Vegas last week when he was comparing and contrasting his situation to Devontae Adams. And I believe earlier in the year there might have been a team that asked the Raiders about Max Crosby and oh. might have floated a one. And I think that they said, yeah, you, know, you start with multiple ones on that guy, and even then we wouldn't even entertain it. So mm. something could always change, but I don't see the Raiders trading Crosby and I don't see the Browns trading Garrett. Who was the team that did that, <laughs> Shafty? I don't know, Pat. Oh, okay. you do. You know. Lie. We know you know, but if you're Max Crosby, obviously you have to love to hear that. There was also a potential same situation happening with Devontae before the season starts. Then that changes. Then he's back. Devontae now is going to be back with the Raiders. Well, That's seemingly I, no, your he, it, it, No, it, it's a fluid situation. There's a lot of ways this could go. And here's where it's at. Basically, the Raiders have been adamant that they want a two-plus. They don't want to pay down any of his salary. And there has not been a team out there that's willing to trade a two and take on all his salary. So either the Raiders are going to give in and move their desired asking price or agree to pay down some of the money, or uh, they might be left with Devontae Adams, which, by the way, like there are people there that are perfectly fine with. And Devontae Adams, I know, you know, it didn't look like it yesterday, but he's a big Aiden O'Connell fan. So he might like the idea of playing with Aiden O'Connell. Now, do I still think that there are teams that are going to keep calling about Devontae Adams? Of course. Do I still think that the chances are better than not that he will be traded? Yes. All I'm saying is staying okay. in Las Vegas is an option. Same teams as before you feel like more likely to get traded to? Jets, Saints, people he's familiar with, or any team? Yeah, right Right now uh, – I think the Ravens, Steelers, Bills have all kind of checked in and monitored the situation. The Steelers were in Las Vegas yesterday. I'm sure there were conversations that went on between the two teams to see what it would take. But again, the Raiders have been very stubborn. And, you know, the problem here is they have in their mind, I think, what has come up in the past. Like a year ago at the trade deadline, the Jets were willing to offer two second-round draft picks for Devontae Adams, and they didn't do the deal. And then in the offseason this summer, there were teams out there that were willing to give up at least a second-round draft pick, and they didn't do that. And now we're into the season, and now we're closer to him essentially potentially being a free agent because there's no more guaranteed money on his contract. And teams aren't willing to give up what they were before. And the Raiders know what was offered before, and they don't want to move off that. Uh. So either they adjust and then trade him, or if they stick where they are, then there's not going to be a trade that's able to come together. So who's going to have to work that and soften that? Other teams, GMs, are going to have to talk to Tom Telesco and say, hey, you're going to have to accept something less than that. Is Devontae going to have to go talk to Tom Telesco? Because allegedly we heard he wouldn't talk to Devontae and they were kind of, or, or they, he wouldn't talk to AP, so they were on a better position. Like, how does the deal get done? Just Tom Telesco wakes up one morning and says, okay, I want less, and then he sounds the alarm, and then Bean or Omar Khan or Ravens, or Jets, or Saints call in and see that? Like, how does the deal just happen? How does one just... Uh, I, well, I think we, it starts with Mark Davis, because it's in his mind that he wants that compensation back, and he has been the one so far that has been unwilling to bend off that and be flexible off that. He does not want to pay any of the money left on Devontae's deal. He does believe that the Raiders should be getting back a minimum of a second-round draft pick. So, you have a situation where the owner is very adamant on certain issues here. And unless he changes his stance, 
then nothing's going to happen with any of these other people. Okay, got it. Uh, the Raiders seemingly never have really have a home game. Certainly not yesterday. Pittsburgh Steelers fans flooded that mm-hmm. beautiful stadium out there. They, they, in they travel everywhere well. Everywhere well. Agreed. Uh, completely agree. But a lot of the Allegiant Stadium has been filled up by opposing teams' fans, which was one of the goals of moving a team to Vegas. Yeah. Is like, hey, people will travel to these games Gee. and fill that place up. Nobody as much as the Pittsburgh Steelers faithful. Yinzers are everywhere. And a trip to Vegas, yep. too. Ooh, I mean, that is bad. Come on. that is right down a pipe for mm-hmm. Yinzers everywhere. Speaking of them, Tone Diggs has a question about that. Yeah, being a degenerate is kind of in our blood, and there's no better place to go than Vegas. So <laughs> Steelers fans will travel there. I get 48 hours <laughs> yeah. in Vegas and get to see Steelers play football. Perfect combo. Come on. Um, are we ever going to stop doing the Justin Fields, Russell Wilson thing? Like, Fields at this point, I think he's played well enough to maybe Tomlin comes out and say, hey, he's our starter moving forward. He's 10, t- 10 total touchdowns to one interception. And, uh, you know, Wilson was back practicing in full this week. He was listed as number two. He wasn't the emergency quarterback anymore. Or do you think we're just going to get every week where Tomlin says, as of right now, this is our quarterback for this week? What's your take on that situation currently in Pittsburgh? Tony, that is the head coach. The head coach has yet to officially place the crown on Justin Fields. Yep. Until he does that, Uh-oh. that conversation's going to exist because Russell's been getting healthier Song and healthier, eight. and the head coach hasn't named him the full-time starter. Now, if Mike Tomlin comes out tomorrow and says, based on the way he's played the first six weeks of the season, Justin Fields is our full-time starter, we can stop this conversation, and we can move forward with Justin, as the then, then it won't come up anymore. But he hasn't done that yet. Mm-hmm. And until he does that, I just think it's going to be one of those situations where it continues to be out there. Justin Fields has stepped in. He's played great. He's done exactly what he's supposed to do. He's proven how good he is. He's very well respected in the locker room. But again, we have not heard the head coach sign off on him being a full-time starter. Now, maybe he'll do that this week. But you just continue to think that as long as he doesn't do that, then Russell Wilson is lurking in the background. And at some point in time, unless the head coach takes it off the table, I still think that at some point Russell's going to get an opportunity to start. You saw Russell Wilson at the end of that play right there. Actually had his helmet on the entire game. was on a sideline. Justin Fields, always ready. Justin Fields went 14-24 for 145 yards. I think there was a drop touchdown in there, though. I saw on a highlight. 59 rush yards, two touchdowns, and he's continuing to win games. And it's like Arthur Smith is now starting to exploit defenses with what Justin Fields can do with his legs as well. I mean, if the team starts getting used to it, getting comfortable, and you continue to win, Tom is not going to make any changes. But I think Tomlin also doesn't want to, you know, make any declarations and then in two weeks having to go back on his word plus, potentially. Plus there's a ton. If you watch the game, as I do every week, there is a ton of hidden yards because there was another O-line injury again yesterday, Zach Frazier, the center. That's like five O-line injuries this, so far this season. So Fields makes a lot out of nothing a lot of the time. Yeah, and I mean, well, you know, go ahead. I, I, I just I felt all along that as, as long as they're winning, as long as they're winning and he's produced – They're not going to change, and that's what he's been doing. So, again, as long as that's going on, he's going to keep playing. But the moment, if they start losing, they they had lost two in a row. If they had lost yesterday, then that would have led to more questions this week. I think last week, after the Dallas Cowboys lost at 1 Mm a.m. on primetime, could have made a change. Now you get a massive win in Las Vegas that felt like it was a Yinzer experience, too. It was. Everybody out in Vegas were kind of in this thing together. They'll continue to roll. You said as long as he's winning, he stays. Let's talk about what's happening here in Indianapolis. Joe Flacco goes down to Tennessee, gets a win for the Indianapolis Colts in the AFC South. There's a stat here from Hembo that since Joe Flacco took over for the Cleveland Browns, Last year, no quarterback has been better than Joe Flacco. He's actually, Joe Flacco is leading, uh, the leading passer in the NFL since he became the Browns starter in week 13 of last season. 309 pass yards per game. Okay, <laughs> He is the best in the NFL since he started for the wow. Browns last year. Obviously, we watched that miraculous run with that Cleveland team that they're still kind of yearning for this season with what Deshaun Watson and they're doing. Then he goes down to Tennessee, plays great. We get a win. Joe Flacco knows, though, this is AR's team. Afterwards, in the interview with Aditi, he was talking about his situation and Michael Pittman's situation. He said, it's not my decision on whether or not I play. That's the coach's decision. How do you feel about everything happening here in Indianapolis? And is this another week for AR to continue to get better here? And how do you kind of see it kind of sorting itself out? Well, 
Before I answer, I'll turn it back to you. You guys are all in Indianapolis. Yeah, buddy. What's the mood there? What does the city want now, this week, this week? I don't know. To be clear, I don't know. I was at my house this morning, came into the Thunderdome. I'll tell you what everybody in the Thunderdome thinks. <laughs> if you're winning, if you're winning, let's continue to do that. But there's a lot of Colts fans, I think, that say, hey, we got to get AR in there yep. to get reps. If we want this to be anything three years from now, four years from now, we got to make sure we get AR reps because he hasn't played a lot of football. And I can certainly see where they are coming from. With that being said, a lot of money has been paid out to this roster with a lot of vets. And if we can go win now, I think there's some Colts fans that are like, can Joe Flacco win us more games than AR? Is AR 100% healthy? Is, do we wait? It's like there's so many question marks, I think, with this situation. Saw two Joey well, Flacco it, cold jerseys is- downtown yesterday. Two Joey Flacco. Two. Not wow. one. Two. Those are tough to find. Okay. I Very assume. tough. That's to find. a custom jersey. Yeah, they're flying off the shelves. Exactly. <laughs> People are ordering those. You win. AFC South games are pumped about it. That, mm-hmm. That's how I'll say Indianapolis fans are. If we win, pump. Well, what I would say is that when the news came down yesterday at – 11.30 when teams are declaring their actives and inactives and Anthony Richardson is listed as the number three quarterback and is inactive. And we discussed it on ESPN Sunday Countdown. Like Everybody on that desk felt like, oh, this is exactly what the Colts needed for today. This is not what the Titans wanted. And it's just interesting to me. It's a little bit like Justin Fields in Pittsburgh where um, the guy's winning and he's playing well. You're taking a guy off the field that's winning and playing well at that time? Is that what you want to do? Again, Anthony Richardson is the future. He's going to be their quarterback. But they play the Miami Dolphins this week at home. Uh What's wrong with saying, A, or we want to make sure you're 100%, which they do, and Joe's winning. And if Joe doesn't come through, then they're going right back to Anthony anyway. Doesn't matter. Like, don't have to force it. Don't have to rush him back. Joe Flacco's performing at a high level. The team is winning. He is producing. You heard the numbers from Hembo. Now, again, it's Anthony Richardson's job. Let's not confuse this. But Joe Flacco's played pretty well when he's called on. And he he brings a certain element of experience and production uh, that, that may make the Colts offense a bit more dangerous. So it's funny right you, you guys said that on the NFL Sunday countdown desk because when we're playing against the Pittsburgh Steelers and Joe Flacco goes on the field, Ben Roethlisberger's first words were, I don't like that. I, 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 like It feels like everybody kind of understands where Joe... So if, if everybody doesn't like that, if everybody doesn't like that, why are they going away from that? Well, it's because, once again, like Joe Flacco, where he's at with his career and the player that he is versus where AR needs to get to, it's like... Ugh. The balance of tomorrow versus what can we do right now. But once again, I'd like to reiterate, a lot of money has been spent on a lot of guys that have been around Indianapolis for a long time. So a rebuild situation is vastly different here in Indy versus other places. I feel like you just kind of play it out, see how it goes. Let Joey Flacco continue to spin it. And then AR can learn, just like Jordan Love did mm-hmm. yeah. behind Aaron, just uh-huh. like some other quarterbacks uh-huh. have learned by. Drake May did there for oh, a few yeah. weeks behind Jacoby. Patrick Mahomes oh. did behind Alex Smith. It's like, was AR around as much last year uh, because of his surgery and rehab and everything? Maybe not. Not this year, getting an opportunity to see Joe Flacco go about doing his shit, and then gets better. Hopefully, like he can kind of have both. Well, I think. Well, let me say this: the conversation is a lot, and it's there all the time because Joe Flacco is a quality quarterback. Yeah, and I think Cleveland didn't want that conversation anymore, yeah. which is why it let him walk. It didn't want that conversation, so now the conversation that. Whoa. Is in Cleveland. That would have been in Cleveland. It shifted to who Indianapolis. Who was that? Who was that? That was, that was uh, someone calling. What? Yeah, but who? Though? Lions. Dirk. Not the Lions. Oh, somebody else saying, "What the Lions gonna give up for a defensive end?" Oh, <laughs> Pat. Ooh. Hey. <laughs> wow. Okay. Gotcha. Hey, all right. Put it on the ticker there. Nonetheless, you Chase guys are like- sharp. Yeah. Yeah, you guys, this this program wasn't put together yesterday. This program. program. Now that's what we try to do. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's what we. Uh, that's what we certainly try to do over here. Um, okay, so the Colts just have a situation that the Browns didn't want happening, but AR wasn't paid two hundred and thirty million guaranteed, and yeah. AR is still very very young. Fascinating very to see young. how they do. I like that we are winning games. Ty Schmidt has a question for you, Shefty, who's back today. Well, congratulations to Ty first and foremost. Okay. Thank yeah. you, Shefty. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank you very much, uh, Shefty. I know that Jerry has has basically said, hey, I'm not going to entertain a coaching change. We, we have who we want. But 
if you look at the Cowboys' schedule, it doesn't exactly get much easier from here on out. What do you think the chances are if the, if they go out and get a, embarrassed a couple more times? And I don't think it's necessarily all Big Mike's fault. I don't think a coaching change is all of a sudden going to make this a playoff Might be that game. hat the way it looks. Could be the hat so and the bad. way it looks. But what do you think the odds are that if the Cowboys kind of lay a couple more eggs that we do get you know a coaching change here within the next few weeks? Well, well, first of all, that's not Jerry's history, and that's number one. Number two, who who do you want to appoint from that staff that's going to be a better coach than Mike McCarthy? Who on that staff is taking over? His contract's up after this year, so there's no reason for the best coach on their staff not to continue on, let the season play out, and then make a decision, especially considering Jerry's history. Like, he just hasn't made in-season coaching moves. He's been as patient if not more patient than just about any owner in the NFL so that has not been his history there's not a better coach on the staff than Mike McCarthy it's the quick solution oh the team stunk at home because they lost 47-9 whereas a week earlier they won in Pittsburgh like they won a tough game that nobody was picking them to win so yesterday they ran to a buzzsaw the Lions were determined to go unleash all the fury and anger that they built up over six straight losses to the Dallas Cowboys they went in there. Lions are a really good team, and they, they pummeled Dallas. And Dallas is a little shorthanded right now, but I don't know that changing coaches now changes things, and certainly Jerry Jones feels that way. You know, he could pull Jim Irsay and just bring back, like, a legendary player to coach. That'd be Remember, cool. like, Jeff yeah. Saturday got hired mm-hmm. off Playmaker, yeah. bring in Michael Irvin. Yeah, mm-hmm. Michael Irvin. Your Romo out of boot. Jason Witten. Jason Witten. Uh, maybe, maybe Dez. Dez. Bring back Dez. Yeah. Hey, Dez, put him on the sideline. Just, you know, anything to say, we need the culture back around here. Yeah. Marcus Ware. What happened to that defense? What happened to that defense? They don't like Zim? What's going on? Uh, it, it's just not making plays. It's, I, I don't know if it's a scheme. I don't know if it's a talent. They're missing a lot of guys, like, Again, let's remember they lose Sam Williams in the preseason. Then they lose Demarcus Lawrence. Then they lose Marshawn Neal and no Micah Parsons. Like you take bland, you know, four of the top. I mean, you take four of the top rushers mm-hmm. off any team. Yeah. Good luck with that. Like um, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how Detroit replaces Aiden Hutchinson. But Dallas has struggled to come up with the answers. Even when they had some of these guys early on, they were getting run on in a big way. Like teams were gashing them with the run. So. Uh, they got some issues to work through. We'll see how they are able to correct it or not. Talking about working through issues, Connor has a question for you. Yeah, Shefty, scary situation in Denver for fellow Michigan man Jim Harbaugh. What happened there, and is everything okay? Is he just kind of is, is that routine because he did end up returning to the sideline? Well, you knew as soon as it happened. I, I turned to somebody. I'm like, either, either he's got. Altitude sickness, which is a real deal, having lived out there and having visited and gotten it myself within the last couple of years, even though I lived there, or he's got a heart issue. Like, it was one of the two. I knew right away. Mm. And fortunately, he went into the locker room, went to the medical tent, he was in the locker room, he gets an IV, gets fluids, came back in the sideline. He had an episode like this back with the 49ers in 2012, not the first time uh, that he's had something like this, an atrial flutter. Um and so he's going to go and get more testing, and hopefully it's nothing of anything, and he can continue treating it, managing it, and going on. Um, I I texted him. I said, you know, Bo Schenbeckler would have been proud. He, he would have said something like this, you know, a lesser man wouldn't have been able to coach. And Jim came back and coached because that's what he does, and he wouldn't let something like that keep him down. But it's obviously something that he acknowledged that he will have checked out further. It's something that he's dealt with in the past. And fortunately, he was able to come back, and he looked like he was okay. Coach Harbaugh, we're pumped that you're undefeated against Arrhythmias, dude. Yeah, right. Right. Legit. That's scary stuff, man, especially with all the hard stuff that's been happening, okay. you know, in the world that we're in right now. They said something about you know, everybody becomes an expert, obviously, or you learn about all the experts on things whenever they happen out of nowhere on X. It was like 200-something. 250. 250 to 300. Yeah, well, heart, heartbeat per minute, yeah, right? which so, is crazy that's in I, I don't even know how what? that would feel yeah. yeah allegedly it's just like bah, 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 bah. that's like, that's what it is Jeez. you know he said his whooping something happened with his whoop like it's wild so we're well, happy I, I, again and, and being back in denver in, in that altitude sometimes does different things to different people and so i wondered initially like i said i thought he, it's altitude or it's his heart it's one of the two what is altitude sickness you just get like a flu what is what is what is altitude? oh my god i i went in i went in about a year ago, 
to Denver. And I lived there for 16 years. I never got sick once. My parents came and visited me. My mom got sick a few different times. Um, and I was like, what's the deal? I went back about a year ago. Um, I landed and I started getting a violent headache, nauseous, feeling like you have to throw up. It, it, it was it was honestly, if you've had it, it's excruciating. And I'm not a very tough guy, so maybe that's just me. But I, I was I was sick. I landed to go meet somebody at a Nuggets playoff game. That was the plan. We were going to a Nuggets Warriors game. We had dinner before, go to the game, and then I was going to fly home in the morning. I landed. I went to a doctor. I went to the hotel room. I went to sleep, and I flew home in the morning. Yeah. I did no no dinner, no nuggets, no nothing. So I flew to Denver to get violently ill and came back. And actually, <laughs> to this day, I still think I'm affected by it in certain ways. So it's, it's just wow. – when you go there, like I've worried, like there was a there's a Monday night game this year. I'm not going to go to that. Um, when you go there, maybe for older like me, it, if you get altitude sickness, you don't want that. You want to take altitude medication before you go. Man, it sounds like Denver beat your ass on that trip. Yeah, I'm happy you're okay. Lord. Happy you're okay. They did. I don't know. Happy you're okay in this entire it thing. It must be something about Michigan men in altitude. I don't know. Well, I'm happy both – you guys are okay, mm -hmm. and everybody else. I did not know altitude sickness was like that. I'd heard of it before. Oh. I didn't. Yeah. Okay. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah okay. I will respect. It. I will respect it. Speaking of respect, Jacksonville and their coach seemingly at a different place. Yeah, Shafty, oh. much different than uh, what you said about Dallas and Jerry doesn't really do that. Obviously, the Jags fired their last head coach before Doug P Peterson at the end of the season. Is is that something to keep an eye on? Are, are we looking at a change? possibly in Jacksonville, because obviously things are not going well over there. I would give you two schools of thought there. The first is that Shad Khan has been steadfast in his support of Doug Peterson, the Jaguars coach. He has stood behind him, and Doug Peterson's a great man, and he said, we're not doing anything, and we're not making any changes, and this is the best roster we've ever built. And we'll take him at his word initially. I also will point out to you, at the same time, that over the last nine years, there have been three head coaches who have been fired after games in London. We saw the Dolphins fire Joe Philbin right after they lost in London. We saw the Raiders fire Dennis Allen after they lost in London. We saw the New York Jets last week fire Robert Sala after they lost in London. Mr. Ambassador. The Jaguars lost to one rookie quarterback yesterday. They play another rookie quarterback Sunday in London, Drake May. If they lose that game to New England and to Drake May, they then would be 1-6 with that long transcontinental flight back to Jacksonville. Now, Shad Khan has not given anybody any ideas that he's thinking of anything. All I'm saying is there's been a history of teams that have made moves after losses in London. This is a team right now that is tremendously disappointing. This is a team that could be trading players before the trade deadline if they lose more games because why would you not want to accumulate draft capital? This is a team that outlaid a lot of cash in the offseason. Something isn't working, whatever it is. If they go to one and six, everybody's waiting to see how Shad Khan handles that. He has been steadfast in his support and insisted he's doing nothing. We've heard other owners say the same thing after trips to London. Yeah, the Doug Peterson stuff, he looks miserable. Yeah, uh, he does. Sounds miserable. Looks like guy lost his joy, just like we were talking about with Coach Sala. Mm -hmm. You know, because Doug Peterson is guy wears a visor, has the hair, mm -hmm. you know, dog, talks shit, like kind of enjoying himself on the offense side of the ball. Offense is doing such He looks absolutely miserable over there. Mm -hmm. The things they're saying about Trevor Lawrence, though. Oh, oh man. Man, it's getting loud about Trevor Ooh. Lawrence, brother. Especially because he just got paid. Let him be a number one overall pick and how it all went. Then he gets paid and how it's all going. It's getting real loud about Trevor. Trevor, I hope you figure it out. They got to help him out. Not this week. It's Agreed. not all on him, yeah. Agreed. There's a couple throws, though, that they are going to show forever from London about that loss mm -hmm. where he underthrows his old buddy and then he misses some people. And it's like that's the pressure that comes with getting paid the amount of money he got paid and then also being the number one overall pick. I hope they figure it out down there for everybody. But it does not – I don't know how they beat the Colts. Like you need somebody – let's say somebody says – you need a football team to beat the Indianapolis Colts, <laughs> or we're going to shoot you in the head. Mm -hmm. We're going to kill you. Yeah. Or your first call goes to Trevor Lawrence mm -hmm. and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah. Right away. Right away. Your first call goes, Trevor, whatever you need, this is what we, because I'm going to die if you don't beat the Colts. Then against the Bears, it just looks, I mean, it looked, yeah. 
That was bad football out there. So bad. It was bad. It was really sleepy bad. football out there. Yeah. Let's pivot to tonight, which is hopefully going to be an electrifying game. D-Butch has a question about a story. Yeah, somebody made a lot of waves uh, this weekend. Hassan Reddick. Uh, we saw CAA split ties with him. Uh, saw that he hired Rosenhaus Sports going forward. Drew Rosenhaus. Is there any chance they get a deal done, worked out pretty quickly, or is he potentially on the move? Well, I think the fact that Hassan has hired an agent that quickly – tells you that he has some level of interest in coming back to play. Yeah. I think Drew, a new voice, a new perspective, maybe that does something. Maybe he says something to Hassan that registers in a different way after all this time. I just think that it changes the dynamics of the equation some. I don't know whether that's going to lead to a deal or a trade or more of the same. But at the very least, I think it does provide, like I said, a different perspective and a boost of hope that maybe – both sides can figure out something that should have been figured out long ago. And I think his former agency had been advocating to him for a while to take certain deals, to go in, to get things done, and he didn't. You think? And so, um, you know, that, that's, that's uh, um, now a change of voice and a change of perspective, and we go from there. Hey, what, hey, what do we got? We got breaking news! Yeah. Whoa. No, we just got my NBA fantasy draft on Wednesday night, Pat. Nothing. <laughs> wow. Good luck out there. I would take DiVincenzo. Seems like he's got a little extra sauce this year mm -hmm. uh, going in. I think he's going to have a great one. Uh, you talk about different perspective there for Hassan Reddick, and you said that you think CA, his former agency, which we know you know, mm -hmm. um, we're trying to like set up deals for this thing to happen, and Hassan kept saying no. That's how we got to this point? Well, it, whatever. It didn't get done. It didn't get done, whether that's the agency or Hassan. Um, I think that at various points, uh, CA was in favor of certain deals getting done, and they didn't. So at the beginning, though, they were both on the same page, I'd assume, CA and Hassan Reddick. Like, hey, we're not showing up in a building until we get a deal done. And then CA potentially at different times thought a deal was good enough to get it done. And then Hassan said, nope, not good enough yet. And then there was just a bicker between their side, their party there. I, I, think, th I think there were multiple points during this entire ordeal that – there was optimism that he would go in and report. I, I think there were, like I said, a few different occasions where the Jets, the agency, thought it was getting done, and it didn't get done. And so here we are. They play the Bills tonight. He's still not here, so he's now hired a new agent, and sometimes a, a new voice can lead to something Getting done. Yeah, Rosenhaus is a good deal maker. Hopefully he's able to get this one done for the New York Jets' sake. Now they're entering a brand new era. New head coach, interim head coach, Coach Brick, will lead the boys onto the field tonight. Aaron Rodgers will be working with Coach Downing on the offensive side. Is there a spirit of, like, freshness here over at the Jets' facility? How do you kind of describe where they are? And then, well, you know, it, go ahead. I, th I, think it, I think it's strange for the team because I do believe that Robert Sala had the support of the people in that locker room, and I do believe that they were behind him. But again, just like we're talking about with Sam Reddick and a new agent, it's just a new perspective. It's a new I, new ideas here. And so it's a change, and that inevitably sometimes leads to a spark. And I think these guys were really behind Robert, and I think it'll be different for them tonight playing for Coach Brick. And I think the Jets, the owner made the change because he felt like this was the best team he'd had in 25 years. And by the way, Robert Sala still thinks that this team is going to the playoffs. So if this team is going to the playoffs, then I would expect, starting tonight, that they're going to play good, inspired football. Anything we need to know about either of these teams before we hit this hard out here in a matter of a minute 20? Well, we got the Reddick situation. We got the new head coaching situation. There are some injuries tonight. I think most of the guys who are listed as questionable – will wind up playing James Cook. I think Khalil Shakir has a chance to play tonight. Uh, Tyler Conklin, C.J. Mosley. I, I think I think most of them, if not all of them, will be out there, but that's unconfirmed. Uh, and it should be a great night. It should be a great night in New York. We got Mets, Yankees, Jets, uh, Columbus Day Parade down Park Avenue. So there, there's a lot going on here, Pat.